Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome to the show. This week we'll be meeting Carol Scanlon and some of our teachers from the Scanlon School of Irish Dancing in Birmingham. Now a global campaign has been launched by the Adoption Authority of Ireland to raise awareness about landmark legislation, which means that people who were born in or from Ireland are now entitled to find out about their birth information. We spoke to Minister O'Gorman, who is the Minister for Children, about this act and to find out a little bit more. And I began by asking him, why has it taken so long to actually get this act up and running? You're, you're right, Martin. It, it has taken a long time for this act to come in. Uh, people in, 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 in the Dáil and in the Shannon in Ireland have been working on this for decades at this stage to finally provide people uh, who are adopted and other people with questions about their uh, about their birth with a right to their information. Uh, and I suppose there, there's a number of reasons why it's taken so long. Uh, and one of it is, unfortunately, there's a, there's a lot of secrecy or there was a lot of secrecy uh, and quite a lot of stigma around adoption in Ireland in the, you know, in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, all, all the way up to the, I'd say, the 1990s. Um, and 
there was, as you know, we had this awful status in Ireland of illegitimacy. If you were born and, and your parents weren't married up until 1987, you were deemed as illegitimate. Now that's gone, thankfully, at this stage. But we had created as a, as a kind of a, a society this stigma around the issue of adoption. Uh, and that meant a, a real barrier to people who had been adopted going back and finding information about themselves. So the uh, law that we passed earlier uh, in, in the summer, the Birth Information and Tracing Act 2022, it finally and conclusively gives people, everybody, a right to their full information, their birth cert, uh, their early life information, their medical information, all of those, uh, all of that information is now available as of right. Uh, and this is a key part of our response to uh, what happened in institutions in Ireland over the decades. And in particular, uh, our response to the final report of the Commission of Investigation into Mother and Baby Homes. So does this act include the 20,000 children who were sent to live with foster families before 1953 when there was no legal adoption in Ireland? It does. Uh, the Act has been designed to allow as many people who have questions about their birth to avail of it as possible. So it's not just available to people who were adopted, it's adop available to people who were boarded out or nursed out. And, and that's an example of those kind of unofficial fostering arrangements that you were talking to there. Uh, it's available to people whose births were illegally registered. And that's a, a separate category that, that we've discovered here in, 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 in recent years. So the whole idea has been designed to allow as many people as possible. And even if you have a suspicion, maybe if a family me member said something to you once that suggests that maybe uh, you were you were adopted into, into the household or you and you were never told this fact, you can still use this legislation to find out information about yourself as well. So it's a very broad piece of legislation recognizing there are tens of thousands of people uh, in Ireland and, and many of them from Ireland, but, but living in another country now who were impacted by adoption, were impacted by, by mother and baby in county home institutions, and who deserve to be able to get this legal right to uh, their, their full information. Now, having the Act is one thing, and it's fantastic that it's actually introduced now, but how difficult is it going to be for families to actually access the, this information uh, going forward? We're making it as easy as possible, uh, and that was one of the key um, one of our key thoughts as we were designing the legislation, make this user friendly. So we've designed the categories of information you can apply for as broad as possible. So kind of the, the, the working assumption is always give the information, not hold information back. Um, we have the, we're, we're the, the application forms and everything like that have been designed in a, in a, in a simple manner as possible. Um, and we also have um, a, 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 a website, birthinfo.ie, which will allow people, if they want to go online for their application, to, to, to do it all uh, online if they uh, so want. But importantly, we, we've created this contact preference register, and this allows people register if they want to be contacted, if they have a, if they were either someone who was given up for adoption or if they themselves gave a child up for adoption, they can register if they want to get contacted or not. And that's important because there are some people who, you know, for whatever reason have, have put all this behind them and, and, and don't wish to engage with, with, with anyone uh, from, you know, a, a, an earlier family. And look, if people want, if that's their call, that's their call and, and that should be respected. So people can put their various contact preferences on the contact preference register and they can do that from the 1st of July all the way up to uh, the 1st of October. For uh, the information campaign and for people to actually register and find out more about it, uh, you're going to run this for a period of months. And also, how do you intend to contact people in other countries other than maybe Ireland and the UK? Well, as I say, um, before anybody can get their information, we are running a three-month 
um, a, a three month campaign telling people about the, the legislation, telling people about their right to apply for information, but also telling people about their right to register a contact preference. So no one will actually be able to get their information until after the 1st of October. And that was to give everybody three months in which they can register their contact preference. Now you'll be able to register your contact preference after the 1st of October as well. You'll always be able to register or, or change a contact preference, but we want to give people three months where they could absolutely put in their contact preference and they, uh, up to that point, people wouldn't be able to, 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 to get information. So that process started at the start of, um, of July, and I know already over 500 people have registered contact preferences on the uh, contact preference register. And you can, doesn't matter where you're living, you can register on the contact preference register. Um, as you know, we're doing a big campaign in Ireland at the moment. We're sending a leaflet in the door of every uh, household in the country, and we've got ads on the TV, on the radio, on the internet, and on in papers as well. We're also really conscious that there are thousands of people uh, living abroad, living in the UK, in the States, in, in Australia, or other countries who have been affected by these issues. Either they themselves gave up a child for adoption, or, or, or they might have been adopted or or, or, or foster it out themselves. So with the Irish embassies around the world, we're engaging with uh, Irish community organizations. So for example, in the UK, uh, we've sent material to, I think 145 Irish community organizations all over the United Kingdom and allowing them to use their networks to spread this information uh, a, 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 about the act and about the rights that come from the act as well. The law in Ireland has changed for people who are adopted. The Birth Information and Tracing Act is now here. It means that any person who is adopted, boarded out or had their birth illegally registered now has full and unrestricted access to any of the information the Irish state holds about their birth and early life. This includes their birth certificate, care information and medical information. This is a free service that will operate from October. The new law also establishes a tracing service to facilitate contact between adoptees and birth parents and relatives. This is also a free service and it allows for different levels of contact. Some people might be willing to share background information, they might be willing to communicate by email, letter or telephone, or they might be willing to meet in person. Others may wish no contact at all and it's up to each individual to make that choice. Well, it's great to see this act up and running. And of course, in families, there's been a lot of upset and pain and suffering down the years. And we, we've all heard the stories where people have tried to trace their families and they come against a brick wall. Hopefully now, this is going to pave the way for a new beginning. Hopefully, Martin, and one of the other pieces of the legislation is that we've created a new tracing service. So you can actually, a person will be able to go and register and ask for help tracing their family relatives. They'll be able to go to the contact preference register and see is there anyone registered looking to engage with them. Uh, but even if that isn't the case, there will be, um, there will be teams set up in, in, in TUSPA who will help an individual trace their family. And if that team finds a family member, they can reach out to that family and see if the family member wants to engage with you or either meet with you or maybe just share information in, initially. Now, obviously, if they decide they don't want to engage, that's their right. But I think that's a, a hugely important step that um, people can not only get their information now and get documents about themselves, but they can actually proactively go and, and, and see uh, and reach out to family members who might be there. So that's another element of this, this law, kind of a proactive element of this law that we think will be really, really important. So basically, uh, to put it in a nutshell, for people sitting at home tonight, they need to watch the TV, listen to the radio, or watch, watch the papers for more information on this. 
Absolutely. And, and if they've access to the internet, it's probably the, 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 the quickest place to go is birthinfo.ie. That's the website that's been set up between my department uh, and, and other organisations in Ireland where all the, uh, the information is, 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 is available. Minister, thank you so much for joining us today and we wish you the very best of luck with the Act. We hope it's a great success for people that's looking for their families. Thanks very much, Martin. Now, if you'd like to find out some more information about this new legislation, well, the details are on the screen now. We're going to take a little break and we'll see you very soon. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now, just to remind you, on Thursday, the 25th of August, we are moving to a brand new channel. We'll be broadcasting on Sky Channel 186. Our broadcast times will remain the same. Please tell your family and friends. Now, Carol Scanlon has been teaching Irish dancing for over 50 years in Birmingham. And Carol, along with her team at the Scanlon School of Irish Dancing, have enjoyed great success down the years. Well, recently, some of Carol's family and friends arranged a surprise party for her because she was celebrating the 50 years teaching Irish dancing, but she was also celebrating her 70th birthday party. And we went along to give her a surprise as well. Irish dancing and 
and everyone around has been the absolute main focus of the whole of my life really since mum and dad sent me to St Anne's when I was 10 and it was sixpence for a class which you will not understand either <laughs> and I've kept going ever since and you are the heartbeat of why I keep going and I don't really know how to put it all in words. Well I started dancing when I was about eight or nine at St Anne's and I carried on dancing 15, 16 years of age. And then Father Murphy at Our Lady of Lourdes, I wasn't looking for a class, but he demanded I go down and teach. And I was 18 and you were not gonna argue with the priest. So that's how I started. You see, he could see a, an excellent teacher in you. I think he wanted to keep the kids off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> We are here tonight celebrating 50 years of the Scanlon Irish School of Dancing, but not alone that. Many congratulations on celebrating your 70th birthday. I know, 70 years. When I was young, 70 was an impossible age that you'd ever reach. And now I'm here and I want to live another 70. <laughs> You've got so much history here with the Scanlon. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. But as you move on, you forget about the history till you ask questions like that. And I go back so far in it, in the simplicity of the costumes, simplicity of dancing. 20 years going to the world trying to win a medal, but we kept at it and we kept going and we won our medals and the rest is history. We produced a few champions and still producing them, thank God. There's a lot of the kids here and, you know, the kids are great and the parents are very good. And it is a milestone for me to be 70 some people who think I'm too old to teach, but I'm so not. And, and for teaching for over 50 years. So it's a little bit of recognition and a thank you to the parents and kids. I know you're quite shy to tell us, but we know that you're seven times world champion. My goodness, Manny, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was, it, every world to me has been so amazing. So I've been so lucky and, you know, I've had the best dancing teachers, the best support system you've made. You know, Scanlon's is such a family. You make such good friends, such good, you know, everything is just so amazing. So every world has been so good, but still so unexpected. <laughs> and of course, congratulations on being the current world champion as well and I was told on good authority that when you danced for the judges at the world title you got 100% marks not one fault my goodness that's some achievement oh thank you so much yeah this world was a little different because obviously with COVID and stuff we hadn't had a world for two years so this one was definitely very special to I think all of us. I first got involved in Irish dancing because my mom and my dad are both Irish um, so especially my grandparents they really wanted me to start dancing because I was the only girl on that side so the boys wouldn't do it so um, yeah they really wanted me to start Irish dancing so they actually bought me my first dancing dress and then I came to Scanlon's when I was about six or seven I think I was six and I've been with them ever since so yeah. My daughter Robin is the under 12, so she recently went with them to the Worlds uh, in Solo and in Cayley. Um, and all credit to Carol and the team for getting her there with the dancing. So how did you find out about the Carol School of Irish Dancing originally? Oh, it's renowned, isn't it? Carol Scanlon, the dance school. You, how could you not know? I can just say thanks a million. A million, million. Thank you. Thank you. Just the recent and current parents uh, equated to 80 just for this site and not including the other locations that uh, the, the dancers are at. But just here, uh, we have 80 coming sort of three, four times a week. Well, it's been a huge part of our life, um, family and, and, you know, it's been dancing since I was three years age. So for Carol Scanlon, so and then did my teachers later on in, in my dancing career. So, yeah, part, a huge part of the of, uh, day to day life for me. You, you start Irish dancing and build friendships for life, so it's all about that for, and the taking part is, and is the bonus and we travel the world with it, you know, so yeah, it's been fantastic and, and Carol's been the backbone of it all, uh, certainly through my dancing career, so. I started when I was five years old, um, joined the class uh, at Lady of Lourdes in Yardley Wood and um, I, I absolutely loved it straight away. I started dancing because my dad, um, he danced when he was younger, so he put me into it actually and um, I, I just loved it and so I stayed with Carol and Trish dancing for the Scanlon School up to the age of 21 and I um, 
became a world champion at that age. And once I won the world championships, I um, hung up my competition shoes and I uh, went into a show and I was touring in Japan uh, with Riverdance. And then I came back, I became a teacher with Carol and Trish, I joined the Scanlon School. Um, and yeah, and now I'm an adjudicator, um, teaching and judging alongside Carol and Trish. I make the Irish dancing costumes. I, um, I've always been into design and graphic design especially and um, I just combined the art side of it with, with my dancing and just thought why not give it a go and um, yeah it's thankfully it's taken off and doing really well. I make costumes worldwide yeah for all different schools in the world. Nancy I know Carol means an awful lot to you. She sure does she's like a second mother. I've heard that so many times here tonight. Uh, but I'm the special one though because I'm actually related. <laughs> <laughs> now I know that you help out here with your mum as well, uh, teaching the children. Yeah, so I'm involved in the, in the main classes, doing, teaching the babies, so teaching them their very first steps. It must be great to see really young children coming along and learning the steps. Yeah, it really is and we've got younger kids coming into the class every week, you know, we've, we've lowered our age range, age range to start them off even earlier these days. Get them involved early. What was she like growing up? I've seen some lovely photographs of you three girls together. Yeah, well I have to say um, she was like she was like a second mum to us as well. Obviously we had mum, but she was because she was nine years older than me, she was always there looking after us, making sure we were dressed right, making sure we looked all right. Mum was always busy, she worked very, very hard. My mum, she worked days and nights. So Carol was always there to look after us and she was like a second mum to us all. Always a leader. It's Carol's way or the highway, <laughs> that's for sure. I am so proud to be Carol Scanlon's sister, as I am Trisha Scanlon's sister <laughs> as well. Yeah, I am absolutely so proud. Everybody's done a proud, it's lovely. I know uh, from people that's been around Birmingham a long time tell me that you three girls grew up together and you always had a good time when you went out. Oh, we sure did. We sure did. We probably have better times now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We're still laughing and having a good time together. We, we always do when we get together. Absolutely, great crack all around. Yeah. Everything was a big surprise, even you were a surprise for me. But uh, you coming, you pair coming was just fantastic and such a compliment to me. Such a compliment you've taken the time to do this. But the dancers, they all got together and we had the Celtic S. We've always had the Celtic S. We used to have a simple costume and we kept it simple for a while though, till we worked up. And then when we got really good, I said, yeah, we can put our name to this. So my sister got the Book of Cows and we got the S from the Book of Cows. And it's been our emblem in the club, in the dancing school. And they had it commissioned and I'm wearing it tonight. Well, Carol, I can tell you the people of Birmingham, you're a legend to them. Thank you, thank you. I don't think of myself as that, we just all do a job. And I've got a lot of people helping me. I don't do this on my own. Everybody helps me, so thank you to everybody. We teach here in the club, uh, and we're teaching all through the summer. And we also teach in Soli Hole, and we teach at the Maypole, and we teach in Dickens Heath, and we teach at Bishop Hill's Day. You need an honest opinion. She's she's the person with the most honesty. I'm telling you, she'll she'll give you give you it straight, and that's what we all love about Carol. She's she's the go-to person for everybody that meets her. She really is something special. So many of your groups of children and world champions and yeah. Britain champions and everything. It was lovely to see. It is, but I, I need to say this, that we have some fabulous champion dancers, fabulous. But every dancer in our school is a champion. You know, it's not always about the title. Everyone's got their own personal goal to reach. So they're all champions in their own little hearts. Congratulations, Carol, on all your wonderful achievements and many, many years of success to come. Best wishes to you. Now that's the end of the show for this week. Just to remind you that we're moving channel on Thursday the 25th of August, we are going to Sky Channel 186.
our broadcast times will remain the same. Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we'll be here at 7.30. Until then, thank you all so much for watching. <laughs>